your dreams. That my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. That was 50 years ago uh, on the March on Washington. Vic Ratner, ABC News correspondent. Vic Ratner, you're there in on the Lincoln Memorial now. Were you there 50 years ago? You bet I was. As a young reporter standing and watching thousands of people pour off the buses that brought them here, black and white, the men wearing jackets and ties, the women wearing Sunday go to meet and dresses, and hats. Anybody remember hats? And that picture of those people marching down Constitution Avenue stays with me. In fact, there were so many of them coming that the leaders of the march almost missed the beginning of the march. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize that the group was such a mixed crowd. You had black, you had white, you had young and old. Kind of set the tone for what it was like back then as opposed to what you think it's going to be like today. Kelly, it was this huge coming together of labor unions and black civil rights groups of religious leaders Black policemen came down from New York City to serve as volunteer marshals. It was this amalgam coming together to declare their determination to march, and not just for civil rights. Part of the themes were for jobs and for justice as well. Vic, was it before the march, was it, was it as big as it was after the march? In, in other words, what, was everyone expecting it to be this, this big? No, because nobody had ever done anything like this before. And in fact, in the weeks leading up to the march, even the people who were organizing the march were not sure how many were going to show up. But then they started to hear stories about 2,000 buses being chartered, 20 special trains, a plane load of VIP Hollywood celebrities from the West Coast. And suddenly, in the last couple of days, people began to realize this is going to be huge. Hey, Vic. As a reporter there, I, I know what it's like when you're out there covering an event and you're not able to really take in something like that. Were you able to take it in? And when you listen to Dr. King speak, because he was like toward the end of the event. So um, At the, what, what was your take? Yeah. At the end of a long program. And, you know, there were no jumbotrons in those days. There were no tweeting and pictures being sent digitally so a lot of us i never got up to the lincoln memorial i was about halfway down the mall and a lot of us in the crowd where i was was were unable to hear dr king in fact the washington post the city's biggest newspaper the next day in its story about the march never even mentioned i had a dream they just missed it completely it's amazing uh, how that, it's amazing that's the well, they always talk about the first draft of history and the first draft of of history with the Washington Post missed the entire portion of the speech that has lived on 50 years. Vic, what's going on today? What's going on today is President Obama will lead the celebration at about noon your time. Uh, excuse me, one o'clock your time, and he will speak from the place where Dr. Martin Luther King stood. Joined by two former presidents, Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter, President Obama, we're told, wants to talk about bringing the dream forward. And at the end, as I indicated, church bells will ring all over Washington and in dozens of other cities. Let freedom ring is the theme here. How many people are going to be there? Do we have any idea? I don't think anybody knows. And the fact that it's raining may keep down the crowd. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that would be kind of a bummer. So are you there right now? I mean, what is it like now? Can you, you, do you have a sense of how many may, people are be able to hear them doing sound checks right. behind me in the eight o'clock shuttle taking off from National Airport? The planes fly directly over the Lincoln Memorial. Vic Ratner uh, live there 50 years ago and 50 years ago today. You're there today. Vic, do you have any of the old, uh, old uh uh file footage of you reporting from there did you keep those tapes some 
No, somebody asked me about that, and no, I don't. Uh, I work for a small news service in New York City that went out of business, so it wasn't kept. But I've got very vivid memories, I'll tell you. There you go. Vic Ratner, right. thanks. Uh, thanks for checking in. Have a good day. Good to be with you. You got it. I have uh, Kelly Jackson. I have uh, fa- seven facts about the I Have a Dream speech that many people do not know. You ready? Yes, let's hear them. Uh, the dream part of the speech, as we learned last night, was not supposed to be part of the speech. That, yes. That people were hit, people who were at the podium around him were almost heckling him, saying, give him the dream. Yeah, tell like him, tell him about Jackson, the dream. Yeah, Jackson, the gospel singer. She's like, Martin, tell him about the dream. Yeah, tell, tell him the dream. Mm-hmm. Tell him, yeah. Uh, also, most of the speech was ad-libbed. Which is completely amazing. Right? Think about that for yes. a second. Uh, this this I only learned the last couple of days after we're sort of revisiting this. Uh, the White House was uh, convinced that there were going to be mass riots. Mm-hmm. And so they sent out 20,000 National Guard troops and just, or just to, to sort of maintain order because they were petrified that riots were going to break out. Yeah. You know, that is amazing because you think 250,000 people, where do you get – how many people – can you be in a gathering of 250,000 people and there not be any issues? Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. Um, many people, as Vic Ratner said, missed the other uh, speech. Mm-hmm. It was the end of a long day. It was a hot August day. Yeah. There weren't any jumbotrons. There wasn't any, you know, it was a n- n- old, I mean, that's old school showing up for a rally in right. 1963. And many people left. And he said he was he was halfway up and didn't, and couldn't, couldn't even hear, hear him. It. Couldn't hear it. You know, it's interesting because, um, my producer, Frank, gave me an article about the Washington Post. That story was buried in A15, on page A15. Yeah. The I didn't even po- mention the dream part. The Washington Post just came out and apologized. <laughs> they said, we screwed up. <laughs> for their coverage. <laughs> 50 years later, they said, yeah. we, we missed it. Right. Front page of the New York Times, I have a dream. Uh, Washington Post w- w- was everything but the actual speech. They were worried about the riots and the celebrities and everybody mm-hmm. else, but people forgot the most what important people part. were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, and then um, after that speech, the FBI started watching um, Martin Luther King because they said, wow, this guy is can 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 move a crowd. He can move the needle. We've got to watch this, this guy. So after that speech, that's when they started to wiretap him. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that you, no one thought what he said that day would have such a huge impact on so many lives, including my own. Yeah, no, it's, you know what, not only yours, but mine, and right. I mean, everybody's. Right. I mean, you, imagine living in a world where you couldn't be friends with a black person, mm-hmm. or you couldn't, I mean, how many times baseball players have told the story, and, you know, your teammates, but the teammate has to stay in one hotel, and you have to stay in the other, and, I mean, just a just a completely different world huge than what we live in Huge ramifications after that. Yeah. Uh, 728 here on the Big 550 KTRS 50 years ago, uh, Martin Luther King gave a speech that uh, changed the world, is it safe to say? Right? I would say, yes. I mean, Wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And I also think that um, I, I always sort of roll my eyes when people say, has the dream been reached? Well, that's such a – first of all, you can't answer it. It's been reached in some levels. Other levels it hasn't been. It's, it's always going to be a constant struggle for all civil rights, whether it's yours, mine, gays. Uh, married I, people, single people, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's always going to be a constant struggle. And, you know, and, and that, and that speech spanned, like you were saying, not only racial lines, but gay rights, right? Um, people of all different nationalities. And until you have issues with anything like that, no, the dream has not fully been realized. I watched that last night. Again, after that um, special on PBS, um, I watched it 16 minutes long, um, and it's amazing how relevant it still is today. Yes, that's what that's what struck me was that everything he said 50 years ago, so very relevant today. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would I would suggest that everybody go back and pay attention to it because the I have the dream part is great. But there's so many other parts of that speech that are equally as interesting. Yeah, so. I I hope that um, classrooms today, if if they can, yeah, they can uh, show that dream to young people and um, really talk about it. Uh, by the way, if you're a, a newspaper like the USA Today, and you post excerpts of the speech, mm-hmm. you have to pay 
a licensing fee because the That's king fam the king family owns it. Yeah. 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 US, USA Today uh, uh, had to pay seventeen hundred dollars in a licensing fee when they when they printed excerpts of the I Have a Dream speech. Makes sense. There you go. Yeah. Seven capitalism. <laughs> when it's That's all right. said and done, it's capitalism, baby. Yeah. Seven thirty one. That's Kelly Jackson. I'm McGraw Millhaven. Big five fifty. KTRS. Golden Oak.